Hello and welcome to this little mini lecture on breadth for search. I'm Charles Severance, I'm your host, and uh, if you like you can follow me on uh, drchuck.com, uh, Dr. Chuck on Twitter. So a breadth for search is a way of traversing a graph, beginning at some starting point, and for a particular breadth for search you have to have a starting point. Um, if this was a sort of tree, you'd start at a root node and you work your way down, but Really, it can be any graph, and you start at a starting point. You look at the neighbors that are connected to that node, and then the neighbors' neighbors, and you work your way out, um, really sort of constructing, in effect, a series of shortest paths across the network. And so the example that we're going to use in this particular um, problem is a network connectivity for the ARPANET, the precursor to our current internet, the ARPANET as of 1970. And it had like you know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 computers, and we're going to compute the shortest paths from a lot of distance. Now, of course, the first thing we do is we take a, a picture like this, and in order to sort of simplify our analysis, we create an abstract model. Now, this is a sort of a physical model that's characterizing the geographic nature of these universities and research labs that are connected. But what we're going to do is we're going to sort of draw a more abstract version of this. And so in this picture, you know, U connects to Utah, Utah and there's the RAND Corporation, and, and then there's MIT, and there's BBN. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence across all these things between the original graph and the other graph. But now we have sort of an abstract representation. And so for our breadth first search, it's, it's really very simple. The first thing we have to do, and, and literally I could pick any of, of these nodes and start and then compute the breadth first search. So uh, what the heck, I will pick, I will pick B for BBN, Bolt, Barrick, and Newman, Bolt, Barrick, and Newman, and then compute the distances to all the shortest path to all the other nodes using a breadth first search. So we're starting at this B node and then we're going to look at each of the neighbors. Okay, so this is sort of node zero, ground zero for our breath first search. And so the R is of distance one, the M is of distance one. Oh, there's another M, so this should be like, that should be an N, so ignore that M there for a moment. And this is a one as well. So now we have made it down these paths and we've marked these nodes as one away. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take these nodes of distance one and look at their neighbors. So, so that means that this L is two away and this J is two away and that J is two away. This U is two away from the one away R. We've got this guy is two away, this guy is two away. And now what we've got is the two away guys. And now we have to look at the two away nodes and look at the not yet visited nodes and then we're going to get to the three away. So this one is three away. It's three away either way here, but it's still three away. The shortest way to get from B to K is three. There's two ways to get there, but there's three. So then we look at this guy, and this guy is two, and so that makes this guy three away. It makes this guy three away. It makes this guy three away. Well, that guy's three away as well. And so now what we have is we have visited all the nodes and we have visited them in a breadth first search. Okay, and so, so part of it is a labeling of, oops, didn't mean to scribble there. Part of this is a labeling of all these nodes in such a way that we know the distance from our starting node. Now, if I'd started a different node, the labeling would be very different. So you can think of a breadth first search as a kind of another way to think of the breadth first search is, I won't be able to draw this very well, but you kind of have the radius one nodes, right? That's the nodes that are that are one away. And then you have the nodes that are two away. And I have to draw this kind of carefully to get it right. So the nodes that are two away, that's this node, this node, this node, this node, this node, and that node. And so within this green area, that is the two. Uh, within the purple area, that's the one. And then we have the rest of the graph, which is kind of like 
Yeah. This, which is three away. So it's the it's the node, it's it's zero. It's node, it's neighbors, the neighbors of the neighbors in the green, and then the neighbors of the neighbors of the neighbors. And then you just keep on going. And so that basically is the nature of a breadth first search. It ends up labeling uh, nodes. Okay? So thanks for this listening to this uh, brief summary of how breadth first search works.